Ni siquiera lo que tengo esa C. Porque estoy aquí. ¿Tú también vas a presentar? Sí, yo no lo cuento. Entonces, un minuto. Después lo reinicio. ¿Por qué? 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 Está muy chiquito, así que toca la
morning and in our work we calculate the using only geometry and using the data from observatory the Pictus Dias Observatory in Brazil we calculate the distance to NHC 6302 and the dynamical age for NGC 3918 and uh, you can check it in the poster and the um, diagrams, the velocity diagrams Well, we calculated the H2 excitation temperature for a series of planetary nebulae. Um, we got this, the, the spectra from Spitzer, the mid-infrared range, and we put those through the cubism package, which was kind of a new way of doing it. And after that, we integrated the flow from each of the emission lines in hydrogen. And once we had the flows, we used Einstein A coefficients and um, statistical weights calculate the temperatures for each object and you can check out the details in our poster. Thank you Thanks. very much. Thank you very much. So it's not this poster because apparently the poster didn't get sent in or didn't get the uh, receipt so you can uh, well <laughs> no I mean this is great but I just don't want to Poster 5 is uh, the GSLI GEMS uh, image of um, in the narrow band of H2. Uh, the planetary nebula NGC 2346 is an extraordinary image with uh, uh, unprecedented resolution, spatial resolution. And uh, once you uh, disclose uh, the structure of the nebula finally with that high resolution, you see that it's not really a torus in it, and uh, there are clamps. This gives a lot of uh, information on how this nebula forms in the ball. As you all know, uh, uh, there's a went to common envelope, so it's an extraordinary uh, object to analyze. And it's a like that is, uh, I think it's not been submitted yet, but there is uh, almost well, out there, so stay tuned. Thank you, Mr. Good morning. So like I mentioned quickly, this, this is a work that I've been quickly doing, might stop doing since Christoph started, started doing it, but uh, investigating what, what do you get when you plug in a synthetic nebula through the empirical lens uh, determination method, and basically it, it just gets it wrong. Uh, so the top two lines are uniform abundance distributions plugged through the empirical method. And you can see that there's a lot of variation there. Um, the top uh, the lower lines are with a 20% helium increase in the center, and you can barely detect it. And this is uh, synthetic, uh, good signal to noise. But if you want to see the details uh, and the actual numbers, poster number seven with me. Thanks. Thank you very much, Hector. Now, Christoph. Hi, well, when I set up all the stuff for APN6, I registered myself to test that everything is right. I realized last, last week that I had to make a poster. So, <laughs> this is my poster. It's of a pie cloud. It's a pie cloud library to deal with the well known photodetection called Cloudy developed by Fermi and Collaborators. And uh, it is uh, able to make a set of 3D nebula. You can turn it, you can uh, compute it's using a velocity field, you can compute emission line profiles. And you can even make three of models and a lot of things. So just the, 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 the link here of the QR code that is text. Thank you, Christoph. So that was super. That's a sweet <laughs> Good morning, my name is Silvana Navarro. I am working at the University of Guadalajara and I present the poster number nine. It's about the cinematical study of the symbiotic system Arma uh, This is a, a symbiotic with a binary in the it's, it's a central uh, It has two bipolar shells 
Gaussian and a uh, well coordinated uh, structure that is observed in almost all wavelengths. Uh, we obtained the uh, long slit uh, uh, spectra, high resolution spectra at the San Pedro Martyr Observatory, and we present here the results of these observations. This is part of a bigger project devoted to analyze the cinematical evolution of some of these uh, type of objects and gravitary nebulas with binaries in their central uh, part. And we are uh, looking for collaboration also with other groups who are uh, interested in the same in the same way. Uh, <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Sylvana. <laughs> So our poster is about three-dimensional radiative transfer models of planetary nebula with the chromos and body. Uh, we present our ideas about a new setup uh, using uh, four three-dimensional radiative transfer hydrodynamic calculations. Um, we use for the hydrodynamic part a three-dimensional MHD code and Cloudy uh, provides us the radiative transfer terms. The hydrodynamic code uh, gives us the density and the velocity structure and we can cloudy get the cooling, the absorption, the radiative pressure acceleration terms and we can combine both of them. Um, the setup allows us any arbitrary geometry um, with the sequence sheet of binaries. So, next one is also a completely different topic. Um, it's about the formation of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons exhibiting a 5-7 member ring defect. Um, I cannot explain it back here, so if you want to know more about it in my poster. Um, we all know that uh, planetary nebula show evidence from mixed chemistry with BAHs with cyclic uh, glass And in this study, we have a geodetic investigation of the IR spectra of two types of BAHs, um, Pyrene, C16, H10, and Colonnade. C24 H12 um, exhibiting this 5 7 member ring effect, and this R spectra of both molecules show big changes in intensity and in the position of the mass. So there's a big change between the normal uh, molecule and the molecule with the defect. And in the post, we also discuss why we think that the formation of these defects is well prevalent and supported in planetary nebula. Good morning. Um, in this work, we search for planetary nebula in the HST and Spitzer archives. And um, also, we, we use the technique described by Romano Corradi in 2004 to search for low ultra structures. And what we found is that many planetary nebula have some ring like structure associated to the planetary nebula, um, which is very interesting. To confirm these ring-like structures, we also take some profiles in selected areas of the candidates. We are working now on the paper. Um, I think that we'll be ready at the beginning of the next year. So um, that's it. Thank you. Uh, this planetary has a complex cinematic and with bipolar outflow. 
the figure one. In the figure one, we we present high resolution spectra obtained with MES in San Pedro Martin Observatory. Uh, three FDs were located passing through the center and on both sides. In the central part, we observed two bright dots and white width extend by more uh, 100 km per second. And in the side, in the side, we observe a slightly inclined width component, possible answer. In the figure two, we present a suburb to lines obtained with Magallanes uh, telescope in uh, Chile. Um, we we observe the high velocity filaments leading to bright dots uh, are due to bipolar ejection present in this object. So this one is um, uh, a comparison of divisions. So this is um, no, no, back to the other. So this is um, 61 newly discovered major nebula in the outer LMC, and uh, they were discovered uh, using combination of M cells and the occasion SR images, um, which you can see in the example there on the left far side, and they were confirmed spectroscopically using. Um, a meter on the AAT and uh, 60F on the occasion. So what we're just showing here are ACDs across all the way from U to um, 70 microns and a uh, comparison of average ACDs for uh, normal PM mimics and other object types that are also confused with PM, especially in the extra galactic uh, work. And then the SEDs of, of PM in the outer LMC to the new PM in the ADLC. We've also got uh, optical diagnostics up here. We've got near and mid infrared um, color cut plots, just showing one in this poster. Actually, 14 of them that tell us a lot about the dust content uh, of these objects and the evolution of the objects. And also, we've uh, separated excitation class for PM in the inner LMC and those in the outer LMC. And there's a full luminosity function now for all the PM that we've got in the LC now, 715, uh, and separate them also. Uh, those that are new from those that are not. <laughs> okay, and now, um, stars. So these are emission line stars discovered also in the Emission Telescope Survey, and uh, we found nearly 600 of them. So we're comparing them and the nebula surrounding them to PN, although the physics behind the creation of these nebulas totally different to PM, we can learn a lot about the effects of rotation because these objects are, are rotating close to critical velocity. Uh, and so um, what we've shown on this poster is uh, just how we did the um, spectroscopic uh, luminosity class of these objects, how we um, just comparison of line ratios and, and uh, line splitting that you can see here, which is a little bit due to zenith effect, but also mostly due to rotation of these stars since they're rotating so fast. And also down here, just looking at the rotation of these objects compared to the rotation of the stars, central stars at the end. Um, up here is just a plot of um, radio velocity for these objects and uh, luminosity function of the HR for emission from these objects compared to the HR for emission from the end in the LMC. And Okay, so please have a look at the poster. Thank you very much. Thanks for the presenters of the posters.